Hey friends, imagine a life filled with certainty, confidence, and abundant fulfillment. A life that exudes clarity about who you are as you enter your midlife and how you can serve others in a world while honoring yourself in an empowering way. But where to begin is a daunting task. Fear and uncertainty is just an excuse that stands in the way from where you are now to where you want to be. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Imagine what your future would look like filled with regrets if you didn't change your direction now. The Life on Tap Blueprint is your answer. This course will help you map out your new path. Have you inadvertently put yourself last all these years, putting others first only to wake up and find yourself lost in the shuffle? I have so been there. Girl, let me share with you the lessons I've learned to create a new path to rediscover yourself. Together, let's go on a journey of mastering your potential, tapping into the power that already exists inside of you. We'll tackle confidence, self-care, organization, health and well-being, money mindset, and how to kick your limiting beliefs to the curb for good. We're going to find and establish your vision, get crystal clear on it. I help women who are ready to envision change. For those that are entering their second half of life and they find they need to rediscover their identity and vision, I encourage them to level up. To embrace your unadulterated true self by managing your time productively by putting yourself first again. I'm obsessed with helping women change direction and rise up in all areas. Let's get clear on your identity. Give yourself permission to put yourself first. This is your solution. In the Life on Tap Blueprint course, you will walk away with all the tools you need to enter into your next half of life while being true to yourself. Six modules complete with worksheets to live your best life. And when you invest in yourself, you're going to get a bonus call with me to personalize your blueprint. I only have five spots available to this because my time is limited and when they're gone, they're gone. So go to francierivera.com slash courses, and I will see you on the inside. Hey, welcome back to the show. I wanted to fill you in on um, a little backstory to me. I mentioned it in episode 37, I believe, when I was um, interviewing Jennifer Pickett, who's the dietitian who turned functional wellness coach. We were talking about how sometimes doctors just don't take females seriously. And when we tell them our symptoms, we're almost made to feel like it's in our head and we're crazy and we're just, we're just not heard. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why that's probably happening. A lot has to do probably with insurance and their busy schedule and all red tape, but whatever. So that exists you know, there's not much we can change about that. But I had mentioned what I was experiencing when I went through BII. BII, if you've never heard of that acronym, those initials before, stands for breast implant illness. So back in, I don't know what year it was. So I should have done, wrote it down. <laughs> um, I had implants for 17 years. So, and they're out now in 18, they're out for almost three years So you could do the math. Anyway, so that's how long ago I got breast implants. They were saline, not silicone, because at the time the silicone were taken off the market. Saline was supposedly the better, healthier option. I got them under the muscle. Now we can go into why I even got it at the time, but um, it was a choice I made because I was a gym rat. I had six pack abs and literally like no chest and At the time, growing up, I had such a hard time finding clothes to fit, especially bathing suits. Like right now, and maybe you guys will remember, they didn't sell bathing suits as separates back then. Now they do. Now you could buy a top in one size and a bottom in another size. Back then, there was no mix and match. So it was very hard for me to find something that matched my bottom half, that fit my bottom half, and then also fit my top half. Okay. So when somebody suggested to me in the gym, of course, like now I'm around all fitness people, they're like talking about breast implants. And in my sheltered mind, I thought that was just something models got or, you know, actresses. It wasn't for the everyday person. 
but apparently it is. And I was just living under a rock and it was affordable. So I was like, why not? So I did it. Loved it. Now, years later, I don't even know when it started. It was so gradual. I started to get just tired, like always tired to the point where I couldn't keep my eyes open during the day and I would crash every night really super duper early and sleep all night anywhere from 10 to 12 hours, wake up exhausted and crash in the middle of the day again. It was, it was a mess and I was always cold. Okay. And doctors would test me and they're like, nope, you're not anemic. Nope. Your thyroid's fine. Nope. Everything's okay. It's in your head. They would tell me that's just you. I'm like, ah, oh, this is not possible that this could be me. Like my life, I just can't, I couldn't do all the things I wanted to do. I was constantly fatigued. And then my joints would hurt. Now, granted, right now I have osteo, um, osteoporosis. No, no. What am I thinking? Osteoarthritis. <laughs> Gosh, I'm all messing this up. I have, um, in my knees are bone on bone. Okay. I don't know why it is slipping my mind right now to say osteoarthritis, I guess. There's two types of arthritis. Okay. I have the osteo kind. Anywho, but all the joints were hurting me and, you know, couldn't figure out why. And I had longer hair at the time and my hair would fall out in clumps. And I would just remember always being like brain fog. We hear that term a lot now, but again, people would chalk it up to, oh, you know, you've got four kids or, oh, you're tired. Oh, you're doing a lot. You have a lot on your plate or you're getting older. This is just what getting older is. And I just didn't want to accept it because there were so many things I wanted to do and I couldn't get to. And then you start feeling shame and guilt because you feel like you're lazy, but you're not lazy, but you feel like you're lazy because you're just exhausted all the time and you have to sleep longer than most. You know, and people would say, well, get up earlier in the morning. And gosh, I was doing that for a long time. And, you know, and then it got to a certain point where I just couldn't get up earlier in the morning. I had to just sleep. Anyway, I was a mess. So I started going to functional doctors. This is when I found out about holistic and functional doctors. Went to them. Now, never, and I don't remember. I think I would have, I'm sure I would have remembered, but I can say with certainty, they never asked me if I had breast implants, which hopefully they do now. So this is still maybe five, six years ago. Yeah, maybe closer to six years ago. And I guess BII wasn't that much in the open then as it really is now. And they would do the blood work and, oh, okay. Then I was always in adrenal fatigue. And then they found out my thyroid was low because they do different testing than regular MD testing. They, they kind of deep dive a little bit further into the body. So then I found out for five years, my thyroid was low. I went on thyroid medication. Then I'd come off of that. It would be fine. I'd be in adrenal fatigue. They didn't know what was throwing. What came first? The chicken or the egg? What came first? The adrenal fatigue or the low thyroid? So they treat me for the adrenal fatigue, which even the Western medical community doesn't even acknowledge that. And that's probably because there isn't a drug for it. It's not in their book, but we won't go down that conversation. That's conversation for another day. So anyway, at least the functional doctor acknowledged my adrenal fatigue and my thyroid. But that kept happening. Over and over again, I would like come out of it with their supplements. And then like a few months later, I'd fall back into it. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And then my, I remember my last visit to the functional doctor. And she's like, your blood work's perfect. Everything's fine. You're not in adrenal fatigue. Your thyroid's fine. But I was still exhausted. So I left there literally in tears going, this can't be normal. This can't be normal. So... I remember doing research that night because I'm a big researcher. Like I will research the heck out of everything. And I really did a deep dive. And I remembered in the back of my head, a lot of influences that I followed or a lot of like friends that were entrepreneurs were starting, I would see them explanting and, and explant is the term for when you surgically remove your implants. And I would be like, what the heck? Why? And I'd listen to their stories and how they were sick. And at the time I was thinking, oh crap, that's, <laughs> I'm going to be perfectly raw and real here. I was like, oh crap, that sucks for them because I love <laughs> my implants and, you know, they're not causing anything because, you know, 
that's my symptoms weren't in my chest, so I never put the two together. But for some reason that night when I came home in tears and I just research that came to the front of my mind and thank God because then I just started researching breast implants and I found all about breast implant illness and BII and I went through all their symptoms I was like holy crap I think I found my answer so again before I do anything I research deep dive into it talk to a lot of people joined all the groups and then it just it just clicked like from what I know now, again, this is back in 2018 when I explanted. So back in 2018, what I know now, as opposed to what I learned, what I knew in 97, 98. Anyway, I know that if something foreign is in your body, your body is going to outward rejection where around the site you would have like pain or your body is just going to create like an immune response. There's something foreign in the body. So it was like this big aha moment, like, holy crap, what did I do to myself? So I had to like let go of the guilt of kind of in my mind, poisoning my body, doing this to myself and say, okay, I I didn't know then I have to have grace. And, And we spoke about that in my interview with Jennifer Pickett, having grace for yourself and knowing better and then doing better going forward. So yeah, forgive yourself for the past decisions because now you know better. You didn't know then. You don't know what you don't know, but now you do. So now you have to decide what are you going to do with that knowledge. So for me, once I found all this out and joined the groups and found out I was not alone, there were thousands, I mean, multiple thousands. At the time, maybe five figures. Now there are over six figures of women in these BII groups, and there's a bunch of groups you can go into. And you're not alone. It's not widely known because, you know, plastic surgeons, they're not going to really tell you. And I always give this metaphor. It's like if you went to the butcher and asked them, what should I have for dinner? They're not going to tell you pasta or fish. They're going to tell you meat, right? Because that's what fills their pocket. That's how they make their living. So a plastic surgeon, when breast implants are a huge profit maker for them, they're not going to tell you, yeah, it's bad to get. Now, not all, because I found a good plastic surgeon who will who did my explant. You have to get the right plastic surgeon too to also do the explant the right way, because doing it the wrong way will set you up for another surgery and your symptoms not going away. That's like another conversation how to find the right doctor who will do it the right way. So I found the surgeon. He was very sympathetic. He just like totally understood and everybody was going to him. And I was very, very fortunate that he was in Charleston, South Carolina, because that's where I lived at the time. I can tell you that as soon as I went for this explant surgery, which is just in and out, kind of like your implant when you do get implants, it's just like in and out the same day. The moment I woke up, not groggy from the anesthesia, but like a few hours later, I was wide awake. You know how like anesthesia will make you groggy sometimes for like at least 24 hours? I'm going to tell you, I think I slept maybe two hours and then I woke up. I was wide awake. It was like the veil was lifted from my eyes. I was thinking in high definition. Like that is the only way I can describe it. I was thinking in high definition. And ever since that time, I haven't lost the clumps of hair. My thyroid has been fine. I've never been in adrenal fatigue ever since. And... I I, automatically, I had dropped like 12 pounds without really trying. That was another thing. I was gaining weight and everything I knew to do as a fitness professional was not working. And again, the doctors were telling me it's because of my age. (laughs) So as soon as I explanted without really trying, I dropped like 12 to 13 pounds, was thinking clearly the brain fog was gone. The veil was like lifted from my eyes, wide awake and not fatigued anymore. Okay. So this is my story. This is my reality. This is the reality for hundreds of thousands of other females out there. It's becoming more mainstream now. I've had to go through almost like a little forgiveness process of my old functional doctors, but like they should have known better. 
But again, it wasn't very mainstream as it is now. And it still isn't entirely mainstream. You might be listening to this and maybe never have heard of breast implant illness, BII. But it is definitely way more popular now than it was, say, even three, four, five years ago for sure. So that's my backstory. I know I mentioned it when I was talking to Jennifer Pickett and a lot of you guys are probably like, what the heck is that like all about? So I wanted to give you my backstory and to reiterate and drive the point home that you sometimes you really need to be your own doctor. You need to take control and do the research. And yeah, sometimes like I found this out via social media, via those brave women who posted about their journey. Because if they didn't post about their explants, these influences and the other entrepreneurs that I knew, if they didn't post about that, if they were like kept it quiet because it's a personal matter, people like me would never have found out, would never have thought of it. So I'm in turn, I'm just grateful for them bringing it into the light. And because of that, I have been speaking about my journey because if I can help another person like they help me, that's what life is all about. It's not about keeping things you know, personal, that's, to me, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Like you just need to keep stuff to yourself and not talk about it. That's like shame, keeping things in the dark. And that's, again, that's another conversation to have for another day. You know, who wants to keep things in the dark? Uh, the enemy, right? So no, I'm not going to feel ashamed or guilty or anything like that. I'm always going to speak my truth because my truth, my experiences are going to help somebody else. That's what I'm here for, right? So that, my friend, is a little bit about my BII story. I think I'm going to have interview somebody else who went through this, and she's very active, and she has her own Facebook group helping other women. So stay tuned for that episode coming up. And remember, my friend, until next time, you are worth it. Thanks so much for listening. But before you go, if you found value in today's show, I would love it if you would take a screenshot of this episode and share it with others on social media. And be sure to hit that subscribe button and head on over to iTunes or wherever you listen to rate and leave a review. It is how we can empower, educate, and shift how others visualize their lives. Until next time, my friend, remember to live a life untapped. You are worth it.